Hello, everyone. I want to take just a few minutes to talk about COVID-19 vaccines. So, you know, as I was preparing this, I came across this site that talks about herd immunity. And the thing that stands out the most is this picture in the middle of all of these people. Um, it, it's kind of amazing to think about the fact that a year ago, this was a normal picture. But of course, now we can't do anything like this anymore. We can't all walk down the street. We can't be in a crowded area like this because of COVID-19. So the only way that we're going to be able to get back to some normalcy is when a lot of people are immune to COVID-19. So this is where we are right now. This is from a website that I have the website at the bottom. You can take a look at it. This is the United States. We currently have uncontrolled spread of COVID-19 in virtually every state in the United States. We are currently heading towards a lot of unnecessary illness and deaths. There have been over 14 million cases of COVID-19 in the United States and 280,000 deaths. And if we let this go on much longer, there's going to continue to be more deaths. A lot of these deaths have actually been in long-term care facilities. So about 40% of the deaths have been in long-term care facilities, even though this represents a minority of the population in the United States. So as you all know, long-term care facilities have been disproportionately affected by COVID-19 and by COVID-19 deaths. So what's the way out of this? We know that infection control is really important, but infection control is not enough. And clearly it's not enough because what we're doing right now is not enough to put an end to this. The only thing that's going to put an end to this is a vaccine. So why do we vaccinate? We vaccinate to provide active immunity. The COVID-19 vaccines may actually protect better than natural infection. Vaccines have decreased the occurrence of many diseases in the United States. And the reason that we even can talk about whether or not vaccines are safe is because many of you have not had to experience many of the diseases that would exist if we didn't have diseases, it, um, if we, sorry, if we did not have vaccines. As healthcare workers, we're obligated to protect others. It's what we do. If we are not vaccinated, we spread disease. Vaccines have been the single most important development to stop contagious diseases. So why not just wait for herd immunity? Just to uh, clarify, herd immunity is a concept in which if enough people are immune to infection, it's more difficult for infections to cause outbreaks. The percent of people who have to be immune depends on how contagious the virus is, how long immunity lasts, and whether the virus mutates. For SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19, it has a reproductive rate of 2.5 to 3.5. That means that for every person that's exposed who's not immune, uh, 2.5 to 3.5 additional people will end up getting infection. With this type of reproductive rate, about 60 to 72 percent of the United States population would need to be immune to achieve herd immunity. That's a lot more people than usually get the influenza vaccine every year. Currently, less than 20 percent of the U.S. population is estimated to be immune. So it's going to take us a very long time to get to herd immunity even with as many people as currently are sick with COVID-19. One of the concerns has been whether or not these vaccines were rushed. So I, I want to say that while the production of these particular vaccine, the technology has actually been in place for years. So both the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines have undergone a three-phase randomized placebo-controlled double-blinded trial which is considered the gold standard of scientific research. The Pfizer BioNTech study involved more than 43,000 participants. The Moderna study involved more than 30,000 participants. These studies were overseen by the Data and Safety Monitoring Board at the National Institutes of Health and will be evaluated by the FDA prior to approval. The Moderna vaccine uh, was designed in collaboration with the Food and Drug Administration and the National Institutes of Health and it included more than 7,000 Americans over age 65. It also included more than 5,000 Americans who are under the age of 65 but have high-risk chronic diseases. These medically high-risk groups represented 42% of the total participants in the phase three COVID study. The study also included communities that have been historically underrepresented in clinical research and have been disproportionately impacted by COVID-19. 
The study included more than 11,000 participants from communities of color, representing 37% of the study population, which is similar to the diversity of the US at large. This includes more than 6,000 participants who identify as Hispanic or Latinx, and more than 3,000 participants who identify as Black or African American. The Pfizer vaccine um, was studied at 150 clinical trial sites in six countries, including 39 US states. Um, it's enrolled over 43,000 participants. Almost 43,000 have uh, received their second vaccination as of November 30th. Um, and again, there was a great deal of diversity in this trial as well, similar to the Moderna vaccine. These messenger RNA vaccines work by giving instructions to cells to make a harmless piece of what's called the spike protein. The spike protein is found on the surface of the virus that causes COVID-19. The, after the protein piece is made, the cells break down the instructions and get rid of them. This causes an immune response. At the end of the process, our bodies have learned how to protect against future infection. The benefit of messenger RNA vaccines, like all vaccines, is those vaccinated gain protection without ever having to risk the serious consequences of getting sick with COVID-19. These messenger RNA vaccines have been in development for a long time. Re researchers have been working with these types of vaccines for decades. Interest grew recently in developing vaccines for COVID, but messenger RNA vaccines have been studied before for influenza, Zika, rabies, and cytomegalovirus. A and as soon as necessary information about the virus that causes COVID-19 was available, scientists began designing the messenger RNA instructions for cells to build the unique spike protein into a messenger RNA vaccine. So this is a new approach to vaccine, but vaccines themselves obviously are not new, um, but the technology for this could be scaled up more quickly. And this is actually an approach to making vaccines that's going to be able to be used going forward to make vaccines to other viruses for which we have not yet been able to have vaccines. These vaccines will elicit an immune response. So it's possible that people will feel a little bit sick one or two days after getting the vaccine and people should plan for that. But that does not mean they're getting sick from COVID-19. They're having an immune response to the vaccine, which is really what we want. So there's a light at the end of the tunnel. We can finally get to the end of this horrible pandemic, but the only way that we're gonna be able to do that is if we all do our part and actually take the vaccine. So I encourage you to do your part and get the vaccine as soon as it's available.